Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to show you how you can animate clips, titles, or PNG images you bring into DaVinci Resolve 18 using keyframe animation. So in Resolve, almost every property is animatable by using keyframes. And, and so a keyframe is a specific point of time which is going to hold a value for a property. So that can be one of many, many properties inside of Resolve. So if we look in the inspector on the Editor of the Cut page, We'll see some of those properties that I'm talking about, including zoom. If your clip is going to be scaled up, then it would have a higher zoom value. And if you were to make it zoom outwards, shrinking it on the screen, then you would lower the value of your zoom. It could be the position of your clip on the screen. So that can be X position left and right and Y position up and down. And pretty much any of the properties that you see over here that have these little gray diamonds over to the right are going to be animatable. So I would say the majority of properties are actually keyframeable. There are some that aren't. So you can see in stabilization, there's no keyframing diamond here. But if you do see a keyframing diamond, then you can animate the property. So for instance, if I want to take the clip in the timeline, I'll just select it down here with a left click, and I want to have it zoomed out at the start, I'm going to lower the zoom value. So zoom X, and we can see it's linked to zoom Y, so it's going to scale up and down in sync with each other. So I'll take the zoom X and I'll lower this down. And that would just be adjusting the property. So to make it animated, we need two keyframe points. So to add a keyframe, which is a time value at this point in time, I will click on the keyframe diamond and it turns red. So we have the zoom value set at the start of this clip. Let's go any amount of time into the future to pick a new time point. So where you want an animation to end, is where you're gonna to want to move your timeline cursor. And then you'll see that the keyframe diamond for the zoom is gray, meaning that there's no keyframe point set at this point in time, which is two seconds into this clip or two seconds into the timeline. So to add the second keyframe, we just need to change the zoom value to something else. So if I change it back to one and I'll hit tab over here to just commit that, you'll see X is one and Y is one and a red keyframe diamond shows up over here. You'll also notice that there's an arrow that allows you to move between keyframe points. So if we left click on this arrow, we jump back to the first keyframe and you can see that's at the first frame of this video clip. And we can move forward again by clicking on the right arrow. So you can just navigate really quickly through these. So you don't need to guess at what point in time your keyframe was made. Okay, so now if we're at frame zero and we actually hit play with spacebar, we should see an animation for the zoom property. So at frame zero, it starts, at frame two, it ends, and the time in between that is going to have animation. So I will hit space here, and that's a simple zoom in for our clip. Now you probably also notice that the animation progresses at the same speed for every frame between zero and two seconds. So if we click on this little icon in the bottom right of the clip that kind of looks like a roller coaster or a curve, then we can expand that and It'll say zoom X down here because that's the keyframe property that we set. I'm going to expand this video window and we should be able to see more information about it. Let's zoom down a little bit and I'll expand this window. Okay, so we can see the curve graph for our animation. And you can see it's linear between this first keyframe and the second one. So one thing you can do here is move your keyframes around. So you can left click on a keyframe point and adjust the value and the timing of your keyframe. That's another way you can edit your keyframes. You can also add a new keyframe by picking a point in time and then clicking this little keyframe diamond adds a keyframe for the property at that point in time. I'll control Z to undo that. But if you want the speed here to not occur linearly, but more like having an ease in or ease out, then we can select a point and use these tools over here to change the curve for this animation. So I'll click on this one that has the keyframe at the center. Okay, so you can see that this gives us a little handle that pops out here, a Bezier curve handle. We can also see that the shape of the curve changed a little bit. So I'll go here to the start, hit space, and you might notice that the animation slows down when we get to the second keyframe point. As you can see, the graph kind of flattens out more here, but there's more of a slope at the uh, start of our animation. So it kind of has a ease out. Now we can adjust how it progresses between these two points by pulling on the curve handles. Usually I wouldn't mess with this because as you can see, it's quite easy to make some weird values here. So if I have the curve handle set to something like this, 
it's actually going to zoom in a lot and then zoom back out a little bit more. So that would look something like this. Could be interesting, but it's usually not really what you're looking for. So you might just leave the curve handles alone. So if we want to add a curve handle to this left side as well, I can click on the first point. So this gives us another curve handle. And when we're editing two curve handles on two sides of the keyframes, it can get a little bit wonky. So usually I wouldn't mess with the curves too much, but I did want to show where they are for the sake of completeness. So let's try animating a couple more properties. If you want to have something slide onto the screen, you can use the position. So I will drag this wolf PNG onto video track two. Okay, so now we have a nice doggo hovering above our base clip on video track one. So let's take the zoom and lower it down to shrink the size of the wolf on the screen. Okay, that'll do okay. So let's animate the position and let's do it at the end rather than the start. So let's pick a point where we want to start to move the wolf off screen. I'll just go here four seconds into this clip. I'm going to keyframe the position there. So zero, zero is going to have it centered on the screen generally. Let's go to the end now and let's position it off the screen. So you might notice that at frame five, zero, zero exact that you can't see the wolf at all. If we go one frame before, then the wolf's still on the screen. So I'll use this point in time for the animation. And then let's give it a off screen value. Something like 1000 pixels should be able to move it off right here. And if we zoom through, we should be able to see the little animation. So let's hit space. And we can see our wolf goes off the screen. Now definitely worth pointing out, you can keyframe more than one property at once. So let's use the right keyframe to go to where the position keyframing started. And I'm going to keyframe the rotation and go at the same time. This will be a little bit silly, but just for the sake of demonstration, let's jump to that second keyframe for the position using the right arrow. And let's give it a spin. So I'm going to add 360 degrees for the rotation angle, hit enter, and make sure a red keyframe diamond is set there. Now let's jump back to the first keyframe, hit play, and we have our wolf rotating off the screen, but possibly in the wrong direction. So I'll go to the second keyframe and let's make it negative 360 to reverse the spin. Go back to the first keyframe, hit space, and there you go. So it's not just these properties in the inspector for the video tab that you can keyframe. It would also apply to any video effects you may throw on your clip. So let's add a effect to this background. I'm going to go to the effects window, top left on the edit tab, then go down here to open effects. And let's find something we can use. A good one to use is light rays. So you can see that this makes basically any of the areas in our video that are bright are going to emit a light ray. So it's actually a really cool effect. Let's drop it on this pixels. Let's drop it on this background clip. Okay, and then we're going to have a light ray effect. So let's hit space and we can just see the defaults. It's not really moving the light rays. So if we come in here and we hit space, it'll kind of look like the light rays are moving, but really it's actually just the video clip and then it recalculates the rays for each frame. So we can move the point where the light rays are emitting from by using a open effects overlay, and then we can keyframe it. So I'm going to click right here in the bottom left of our preview window and change this to open effects overlay. And then let's zoom out on our video frame a little bit here, middle mouse wheel out. And you might see this little sun icon up here. So the sun, we can move it around the screen and this actually controls the position where our light rays are coming from. Really cool. And we can animate the position of that. So if we go back to the inspector and we open up the effects tab, then uh, you'll see position X for the light rays location is the property that we're actually setting by moving this around. So we can have it start, let's say at uh, zero, zero at this location. And then as we get to, let's say two seconds in, let's move it on the screen to a new location. This automatically sets a keyframe point. And let's go to four seconds and we'll set a third point down here. It's not going to make a lot of sense. And then a fourth point will have it on the left hand side. So I don't know what sun works like that, but we're definitely animating the property. So let's zoom in, go to frame zero, hit space to play, and we can see our light rays location is animating across the screen. And that changes how the visual effect is going to look. Naturally, in addition to just the location, there's a lot of other properties you can play around with, like the length of the rays, how soft or sharp you want them to be, and the general brightness. If you want them to be extremely intense, you can go way overboard with that. And these are also animatable properties. 
So you can see that in Resolve, you can animate a heck of a lot of stuff. And it's not only on the edit page, but if later you do play around in the Fusion page, this is another place you can add some visual effects. I'll just briefly touch on it right now. So let's add a, so I'm going to select media in one. You can think of this as your import that comes out of the media page. And then your output is what's going to feed further along the process into your color page. So it's an intermediary step. Let's select media in one and click on this little teardrop icon to add a blur. So I'm going to control middle mouse zoom on this. Oh, actually, uh, the blur was supposed to be on this line. So if that didn't happen for you, left click on the line over here, close to media out where it's blue, connect media in one to blur one and blur one to media out. Uh, that's how you connect your nodes in a chain. It goes sequentially until you get to the media out for your final output that goes to color. So let's click on blur, expand the menu by clicking on the name in the inspector, increase the blur size so we can actually see a blur there. Now I want that to be how blurry it looks at, let's say frame zero. So I'm gonna go to frame zero, keyframe it here, just like on the edit page. Now let's go to frame 30, uh, which in this video is going to be one second in 30 frames per second. And I'm going to set the blur to zero. So as we start the clip, it's going to be blurry. And then after one second, the blur is all gone. So we've now animated a blur effect. And we can also see this on the edit page. We go to frame zero, we hit space, and it might be a little hard to tell, but the clip is becoming less blurry over the course of the first second. So. A lot of ridiculous stuff going on here in this video clip that we've created for this video, but we animated a bunch of properties. Hopefully this gave you a good understanding of keyframes and just some of the stuff you can do with it, applying it to effects, your video clips, PNG images, and everything else in DaVinci Resolve 18. Thanks for watching to the end. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. I've been Chris and I'll see all of you in my future video content.